Mira, what are uh, free forwarders and how, how does uh, somebody even go about finding them and how does it actually work? Okay, so very good question. So if we think about the whole process, we're going to have a factory in China. And this is, freight forwarders are generally used for overseas operations and things like that. Not that they're limited to that, but generally they're used for that. Now, you have a factory in China. Once the product is done uh, and, and inspected, it's going to get need to get picked up by a truck from that factory, taken to the port of China. Uh, over there, it's going to be, uh, you know, put on a boat and that boat is going to take it to the port of America, whether it's New York or Long Beach or whatever, you know, any port. Once it's there, it's going to be taken off that boat. It's going to clear customs. They're going to do uh, inspections and, and you have to pay duties and taxes on it. And then it's going to be put on another truck. And then once it's on that truck, it's going to go to the Amazon warehouse or your warehouse. And we'll talk about that in a second because now with the restrictions, you need to have your own warehouse. But basically, it's going to be taken from the boat to the warehouse. Now, you can book uh, all of those things yourself. So you can book a truck from the China uh, manufacturer to the China port. And then you can book the boat. So get it on the boat and, you know, come to America. And then you can book the, the broker, the customs broker, to clear the customs and pay the duties and taxes and all of that stuff. And then you can book the truck to go from the port all the way to the warehouse. But obviously that's not our job in the business is to spend 24 7 booking trucks and co uh, communicating with them so you hire a freight forwarder now what a freight forward, uh, forwarding company does is they have connections with all of that they have connections with trucking companies they have con connections with uh, ocean freight companies they have connections with customs brokers they have connections with trucking companies in the u.s and in china so they can handle the whole thing for you and the freight forwarding company their job is basically to pick up the stuff from the manufacturer's warehouse and deliver it all the way to um, the Amazon warehouse or your warehouse. There's a few different uh, terms you're gonna hear used for picking up from the manufacturer. So there's DDP, X work, and uh, FOB. So DDP basically means door to door from the manufacturer. So if, if your terms with your manufacturer is DDP, which means door to door, it means they're in charge of delivering the product to your door. Now, do I recommend that? Uh, recommend for you to do DDP generally not why because you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket and pay your manufacturer uh, you know to, to handle everything because you don't know what you're going to get maybe once you have a certain level of trust with that manufacturer you can you know uh, like look at that as an opportunity for you to even not have to worry about a uh, freight forward or anything but leaving all of your eggs in one basket and having the manufacturer do everything and then having them delivered and all of this stuff and you don't know your products what what's going on with them or even having contact with the freight forwarder that can be a little bit scary with um fob the manufacturer will deliver the products all the way to the port i don't really see a benefit to that because you know what are you going to save like 50 dollars maybe you know instead of you um kind of picking it up from the manufacturer's warehouse and, and delivering it to the port yourself, you have the manufacturer send it there. What I'm afraid of is it gets to the port and then there's a lack of communications between your freight forwarder and the boat company and the trucking company or, or the manufacturer who's delivering the stuff to the port and then you know delays can happen. So I'd rather just do X work. X work basically means the manufacturer makes the product and then leaves it in their like facility for us to pick up. So they're in charge of just making it. And then we will hire a freight forwarding company to set up a truck, come pick up the stuff, you know, and do everything else. And so people will ask me a lot, um, what's the, can I get a, an estimate of how much my stuff will cost? Unfortunately, it is impossible. If a company, a freight forwarding company gives you a, a quote more than two weeks out, you know that you are going to overpay. The reason is I've worked in that industry and I understand that because of the volatility of the quotes from trucking companies and ocean freight, it is impossible to predict how much things will cost. Trucking companies and ocean companies refuse to give a quote unless it's like one or two weeks out. So the, the way you are gonna handle this is that you're going to just have to be okay with not knowing how much you're gonna pay for freight and then wait until your stuff once you have a, a freight forwarding company and we'll talk about how to evaluate a good freight forwarder so once you have that and you have an inspection company and you have a manufacturer you're going to put them all in a group chat and you're going to tell the manufacturer okay 
I'm gonna stay, you know, in touch with you, and and we're gonna keep everyone in the loop. When you're about two weeks out, let us know. So after, you know, you're gonna keep following up every two weeks, and then when they're two weeks out, you're gonna say, hey, you two weeks out, are you still good on that November 15th date, for example? Let me say, yes, I'm good for November 15th. Things will be done by then. And then every, you know, few days you follow up, and then the week of you follow up, and then three days to the date of completion you follow up, up until one day before completion, you're constantly following up to say, say hey. I want to make sure that my inspector comes one day after you've completed the, you know, the manufacturing of these products. Let me know and, and you keep things in that group chat. The second that the manufacturer says, yeah, okay, yeah, we're 100% we're solid for November 15th and it's like a couple days out, you tell the inspection company, hey, I want you there one day after. So if they're done November 15th, I want you there November 16th. And then you tell the freight forwarder, you're like, hey, granted that the inspection goes through and everything is good, I want you there November 17th with your truck picking up the stuff. And so you make sure everyone coordinates with everyone and they pick up the stuff on time and then they deliver. Now, certain things, good uh, uh, characteristics to look for in a manufacturing company is the same as an inspection company. They need to have really good communication. Now that is the most important thing is for them to be on the ball. It is incredibly scary when your stuff gets picked up uh, on November 15th and you have no idea what's happening to it until January 15th when it arrives at the warehouse. It is so scary. You're like, did my stuff vanish? Like what's going on with my stuff? And so having someone who has the connections and stays on top of things and is constantly giving you updates. Um, I worked with a, a freight forwarding company in one of my corporate jobs in the past and they were so on the ball. They were like, you know, hey, uh, you know, it's here, it's there, it's in Kentucky, it's this, it's that, it's on the boat, it's it's five days out, it's seven days out, uh, we just cleared customs, da, 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 and, you know, I was constantly getting updates and updates, and I was like, you know what, I I feel very confident, you know, because I love how my stuff's being tracked. It's Imagine if you kind of had, like, your tracking as, like, a, a, on, a dot on the map. It, it was so beautiful, because they told me, you know, all the time, where things are, what the status is, I didn't have any worries, and trust me, when you are placing your order and it's you know ten thousand dollars worth of goods and it's your first time ever doing this, it's going to be very scary. And and if your freight forwarder is very well communicating with you, it's going to make you feel a lot better. So uh, don't try to be cheap. Don't try to when, be cheap when it comes to this because you can lose your. Is better than uh, than anything. Yeah, because number one, you can lose time. Number two, you can lose your whole shipment. Um, you want to make sure that they have a lot of experience. Them having uh, offices in you know where you're going to be manufacturing, so China for example, is good. So if they have a U.S. office in China office, that's awesome. Uh, ask for the number of employees, num uh, number of years experience. Make sure that they have uh, contacts with cust uh, customs brokers and they're not just using whatever customs brokers. Make sure that they have a relationship built with customs brokers. Make sure that they've done this in the past. If they have Amazon experience, it's always a plus um, and always get references because references can never help. But generally, that's what I would look for in a, in a freight forwarder. And, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, pricing, you're never going to know. You just want to make sure that you pick the best person or the top five. And again, two weeks out when your stuff is almost ready and you know that they're going to be in X amount of boxes and X amount of pallets and, and X amount of weight and dimensions, you can then quote from five different manufacturing companies and then have that criteria and say, you know, these are my top five manufacturers. Okay. Number one is going to cost me 1800 and number two is going to cost me 1200. So, you know, it's okay. I'll go with a little bit less quality, uh, you know, cause it's a $600 difference. But if it's like, you know, number one is going to cost you 1400, number two is going to cost you 1200. Just pay a little bit more. It's worth, you know, Picking the best one and your peace of mind one because you probably so spent 10, 20, mind. 60 grand on yeah. your products. You want to make sure that it arrives. Yeah, and at the end of the day, guys, if you want to be a, a really good company, if you want to be an A1 uh, company, you need a really good team yeah. and you need really good manufacturer, really good inspection company, really good freight forwarders. So you can't. I mean, when you're starting out, yeah, you might want to go a little bit cheaper, but I always tell people. Please stay away from being too cheap. It's just going to hurt you in the and long run. And when you found the perfect one, don't try to shop around. Oh, I found one that's $100 cheaper because, again, because a lot of people do this. They they switch. I mean, we know services yeah. all the time. They're like, oh, this person is going to save me $50. But then, you know, you'll notice your quality decrease over time. Yeah. So um, another question for the freight forward forwarders. They have uh, some type of insurance? Yes. Themselves? You, so they will offer you insurance. Um, I always recommend that you pay for insurance because it insures 
Um, I mean, we've seen the memes of the boats tipping course, over. Yeah, and we, it's and very, we, very yeah. scary. So, and I personally know of, uh, you know, companies that have gone, uh, like a freight company that went bankrupt and then all shipments were indefinitely delayed. So you want to have your own insurance and you want the freight forwarders to have their own insurance. Correct. Right? Yeah. And generally it's not that expensive. I think it's about a hundred dollars, but it's a hundred dollars and you're insuring, you know, 10 thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand worth of goods so um it's not a big deal do you have a recommendation for an insurance like that or you just go through like your i insurance? usually go through my my your own, own liability insurance, insurance. Gotcha. so my whatever umbrella liability insurance i have for that business i go through the same one so it's not very hard to find and uh again the freight forwarder always recommends companies for you to use and and their company and i don't think that they make any money on that so they they're not going to be trying to recommend a certain you know better or worse insurance company this is so good to know because i these are like small details that a lot of people don't think yeah. about like i wouldn't have thought of it so thank really yeah. thank you thank yeah. you for when this. you're in the weeds a lot of things happen yes thank awesome. you